if people have access to the necessities of life without servitude, debt, barter, trade, they behave very differently. You want all these things available without a price tag. Now then, you've got to have a price tag. Well, what will motivate people? A uh, man gets everything he wants, he just lay around in the sun. This is a myth they perpetuate. People in our culture are trained to believe that the monetary system produces incentive. If they have access to things, why should they want to do anything? They will lose their incentive. That's what you're taught to support the monetary system. When you take money out of the scenario, there would be different incentives, very different incentives. When people have access to the necessities of life, their incentives change. What about the moon and the stars? New incentives arise. If you make a painting that you enjoy, you will enjoy giving it to other people, not selling it. I think most of the education that I've seen today is essentially producing a person for a job. It's very specialized. They're not generalists. People don't know a lot about a lot of different subjects. I, I don't think you could get people to go to war if, if they knew a lot about a lot of things. I think education is mostly rote and they're not taught how to solve problems. They're not given the tools emotionally or within their own field of how to do critical thinking. A resource-based economy, the education would be very different. Our society's major concern is mental development and to motivate each person to their highest potential. Because our philosophy is the smarter people are, the richer the world, because everybody becomes a contributor. The smarter your kids are, the better my life will be, because they'll be contributing more constructively to the, to the environment and to my life, because everything that we devise within a resource-based economy would be applied to society. There would be nothing to hold it back. Patriotism, weapons, armies, navies, all that is a sign that we're not civilized yet. Kids will ask their parents, didn't you see the necessity of machines? Dad, couldn't you see that war was inevitable when you produce scarcity? Isn't it obvious? Of course the kid will understand that you were pinheads raised merely to serve the established institutions. We're such an abominable, sick society that we won't make the history book. They just say that large nations took land from smaller nations, used force and violence. You'll get history talked about as corrupt behavior all the way along until the beginning of the civilized world. That's when all the nations work together. World unification, working toward common good for all human beings and without anyone being subservient to anyone else, without social stratification, whether it be technical elitism or any other kind of elitism eradicated from the face of the earth. The state does nothing because there is no state. Because there is no state. The system I advocate, a resource-based global economy, is not perfect. It's just a lot better than what we have. We can never achieve perfection. The social values of our society, which has manifested in perpetual warfare, corruption, oppressive laws, social stratification, irrelevant superstitions, environmental destruction, and a despotic, socially indifferent, profit-oriented ruling class, is fundamentally the result of a collective ignorance of two of the most basic insights humans can have about reality, the emergent and symbiotic aspects of natural law. The emergent nature of reality is that all systems, whether it is knowledge, society, technology, philosophy, or any other creation, will, when uninhibited, undergo fluid, perpetual change. 
What we consider commonplace today, such as modern communication and transportation, would have been unimaginable in ancient times. Likewise, the future will contain technologies, realizations, and social structures that we cannot even fathom in the present. We have gone from alchemy to chemistry, from a geocentric universe to a heliocentric, from believing that demons were the cause of illness to modern medicine. This development shows no sign of ending, and it is this awareness that aligns us and leads us on a continuous path to growth and progress. Static, empirical knowledge does not exist. Rather, it is the insight of the emergence of all systems we must recognize. This means we must be open to new information at all times, even if it threatens our current belief system and hence identities. Sadly, society today has failed to recognize this and the established institutions continue to paralyze growth by preserving outdated social structures. Simultaneously, the population suffers from a fear of change, for their conditioning assumes a static identity, and challenging one's belief system usually results in insult and apprehension, for being wrong is erroneously associated with failure. When, in fact, to be proven wrong should be celebrated, for it is elevating someone to a new level of understanding, furthering awareness. The fact is, there is no such thing as a smart human being, for it is merely a matter of time before their ideas are updated, changed, or eradicated. And this tendency to blindly hold on to a belief system, sheltering it from new, possibly transforming information, is nothing less than a form of intellectual materialism. The monetary system perpetuates this materialism not only by its self-preserving structures, but also through the countless number of people who have been conditioned into blindly and thoughtlessly upholding these structures, therefore becoming self-appointed guardians of the status quo. Sheep, which no longer need a sheepdog to control them, for they control each other by ostracizing those who step out of the norm. This tendency to resist change and uphold existing institutions for the sake of identity, comfort, power and profit is completely unsustainable and will only produce further imbalance, fragmentation, distortion and invariably destruction. It's time to change. From hunters and gatherers to the agricultural revolution to the industrial revolution, the pattern is clear. It is time for a new social system which reflects the understandings we have today.